So today we're going to start off with this crazy video from a bear walking out of the Gulf of Mexico onto the beach here in Destin, Florida. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I always joke around with you about that squirrel can water ski. <laughs> But this was a damn bear coming out of the water, right? Mm -hmm. And it says that the video shows a black bear walking out of the ocean into a crowd of beachgoers in Destin, Florida. And it's not even so much that I was surprised at the bear coming out of the water. More so, I was surprised at how many people were around the bear. Yeah. Like, hanging out by the bear, like, so close to the bear... This is like shocking how stupid people are. Especially, I mean, if you, I, I'm guessing they've never seen cocaine bear because those things are terrifying. <laughs> cocaine bear. <laughs> that uh, movie is awful. But I was trying to figure out where the bear was exactly on the beach, but I couldn't tell from the video where, what part of the beach it was. Mm -hmm. um, but it says it's not uncommon for bears to be on the beach according to a florida charter boat captain i remember uh like two years ago we were here my brother was standing on the on the beach and he saw the dolphin fin mm -hmm. and he's like everybody get out of the water there's a shark and we're like bro that's a dolphin that's a dolphin like he lost it i wonder what would happen if he saw a bear oh bad things where most people didn't even realize it some people thought it was a dog but uh, it's, they said that when you go to the beach, you expect to see dolphins, seagulls, and a variety of sea life. But mm -hmm. black bears on the beach or not swimming so in the surf, yeah. that might surprise you. It's not uncommon, according to Captain Chris Kirby, a charter boat captain for Charter Boat Backlash, which operates out of Destin. There are a lot of bears at Eglin Air Force Base, and they swim across the bay. Sometimes they go for a joy swim. That's what I was going to say, because we know that there's a ton of them in Niceville, and... Sorry, there's a really cute dog walking by right now. <laughs> we are distracted by the cuteness of dog. We're distracted by the dog that we saw the owner of yesterday while we were at East Pass. It was just a strange coincidence. Yeah. And I wouldn't have noticed. I wouldn't have known. She's got leggings on today, right? Uh huh. But I only knew yesterday because she had shorts and she's got these tattoos of text knee. right there. It's uh -huh. like I was when I saw. It, I was like, that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, anyway. Um, there are bears. Oh yeah, so we know that they're in Niceville. That's like a whole thing is um, bears being picked up on ring camera in Niceville and stuff. And my thought was, did he get into the the bay at, in Niceville and just take like the world's longest swim around the harbor to the Gulf and back up? <laughs> or just floated. Yeah, just a Lazy leisurely, leisurely day. So we got these uh, uploads by Jennifer Majors Smith on Facebook. I tried to get them, but they wouldn't work. Uh, but it's, I, I saw like a little clip. And like people just standing there with the bears like but she says at first no one on shore could tell what it was in the ocean uh she's vacationing here from nashville uh which eventually our friends from nashville are coming down here july he says july may beginning of august that's gonna be fun that'll be a lot that'll of be fun. a fun video when they show up <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, we have to put that on patreon for sure yeah. <laughs> it'll just be a bunch of like Idiots. uh um uh, sensor bleeps yeah. uh, a lot of drinking is going to be happening but it says a man was yelling out bear and you wouldn't you would expect shark or dolphin yeah. but not bear yeah and she says that of course my animal loving son started following it so my mother-in-law grabbed him and this is what I was talking about yesterday where when you go on vacation you can't forget that you're not invincible on vacation. Well, here's the other problem, You, you see a bear not on vacation, don't chase after... Like, you wouldn't do that. So if you're on vacation, don't chase after the bear. Don't take selfies with bison. Don't do stupid stuff. The problem is that people have been dumbed down by watching movies where these animals are just sweet and whatever, or by going to zoos where they're caged and whatever. No, they've been dumbed places, down but... by wanting the clout and the likes and the shares oh, and the virality too. of that uploading it to Facebook. You say virality? I think, yeah. Is it viral? Viral? Viral. viral? viral? Okay, that makes sense. A lot of views. A lot of views. <laughs> uh, a lot of people. Now, you shared this with me this morning of other animals coming out of the water. And this would happen in Texas. Mm -hmm. Tens of thousands of dead fish washed up on a Texas beach due to low oxygen levels. 
Is that what they said? That's what this one says, because the one you said said they don't know. Yeah. This one says low oxygen levels. Are they sucking the oxygen out of the water? I mean, what sucks the oxygen out? I don't know. Some sort of scientific process where you have to separate the uh, oxygen molecules from the hydrogen molecules. So maybe it could be a thing because they were trying to... They were trying to do Doesn't something. They make ammonium nitrate. They Isn't were trying the to do something with the uh, with the ocean water. They were trying to. Oh yeah. They were trying to manipulate the ocean water to do something. I don't remember exactly what it was. Oh yeah, I don't remember what it's called, but it's basically where you take the salt out of the ocean water so that you can use it for regular water. Uh, what it's called. Quintana, Texas. Quintana. Maybe? Mm-hmm. The 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 park there. Tens of thousands of dead fish washed up on the Texas Gulf Coast over the weekend, covering the shoreline with rotting carcasses and leading local officials to warn visitors to keep away, which kind of sucks. Obviously, it's kind of disgusting, and the birds would be out there flying around, and they said there was sharp fish parts and things mm-hmm. like that. But if that was your vacation... Can you imagine? It's kind of ruined. I mean, it's kind of ruined, but you also have a story for your vacation. Yeah, you also got a lot of money you spent to go to the beach, and now you can't enjoy the beach. Very true. Because they said not not only is, you know, the dead fish kind of gross and whatever else, but the bacteria from it all could be oh, man. deadly. And then you got people that's going to run out there and play with the dead fish like they would play with the bears, and they're going to get this bacterial infection. And then you are not invincible on vacation. I don't know how many times i got to say this. Yeah. But speaking of vacation, we got a serious conversation we need to have about the tourist and tourism vacation travel but more importantly the local economy and the employment and income Mm -hmm. of east pass specifically as we learned this yesterday but we're going to talk about that in a moment and how this could be very very bad Mm -hmm. very very bad very 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 bad (laughs) if anybody is is he the he's not the fail army is he he's the daily dose of internet daily dose of internet at the very end See you again. Ver, ver, sing. Ver, ver. <laughs> now, we are in a moment of economic stress and pain, which makes vacationing and life in general much harder for a lot of people these days. Like, I like how you say moments. It feels like it's been more than a moment. <laughs> I don't know what your definition of moment is, but no, I feel right. like it's been longer it's than a It's a long moment. moment. It's a long it's moment. Like, it's like when you say, I'll be there in a minute. You ain't going to be there in 60 seconds. I'll be there. It's like, you know, it's a minute. <laughs> Mike, little pause. <laughs> Rodic. Rodic. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and people, the vacation is a struggle because it's it's a cost. It's, ex- it's an expense mm-hmm. on top of having the ability to get time off from your job which is now actually getting time off from multiple jobs. Yeah. Because most, a lot of people are more, working more than one job. And maybe it's like, all right, I got to get time off from my main job, but then that means I can't do my side gig unless I turn on my Grubhub, Uber, Eats, DoorDash, Lyft, all my signs when I'm on vacation and I can kind of pick up some stuff there, maybe do Walmart Spark. So, but then it's not really a vacation. You're just working somewhere different somewhere else now think of it this way what if you know there's five employees and you know that your company's looking to lay off people and you're the one who decides to take vacation they're like well that's not the team player that oh yeah there's, yeah there's always animosity you've heard of people who get fired while they're gone like there's always how do you get fired on your day off craig there's always animosity <laughs> they said i was stealing boxes animosity and, and you know we heard this the other day from a friend and he was like you know when i try to get time off for vacation they want to ask me why it doesn't matter why. I want time off for vacation. You better get no, out of here. Is not, you better get out of here with that nonsense. This is not the same topic, but it is kind of the same topic. People who smoke and can walk outside and stay outside for 15 minutes at a time, numerous times a day to have a cigarette, yet if you don't smoke, you cannot do the same thing. I have an issue with that. Yeah, but if the manager's a smoker too, then you're a team player. You're yeah. out there having those conversations, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it says that at a time when most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, the quiet luxury trend takes over. Quiet you heard about this one? Luxury? Quiet luxury. Uh-uh. I mean, this feels like quiet luxury to me right now. So it says that the quiet luxury trend has quickly caught on, even though these days most Americans are more likely to live paycheck to paycheck. Marked by expensive materials and mu- muted tones, quiet luxury is also known as stealth wealth. Oh, now, people warned about this last year. Uh-huh. 
they warned about it last year from the standpoint of if you look like you have money, then you're a target. Mm -hmm. Which is why Kanye walks around looking like he's homeless half <laughs> the time. And have you seen his line of clothing and stuff? As Americans' economic circumstances get increasingly divided, consumers could benefit from the shift to low-key basics over loud logos. Which then means that maybe these expensive brands and trends will see a decline. Well, it just means that more people will be like, you know what, I'm going to go shop at Walmart instead because I'm low-key whatever. So it's Walmart that's pushing this. I've just You're decided. damn skipping ahead again. Really? How do you do this? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, you're skipping way ahead. We'll get there in a minute. Okay. We're going to talk about Walmart. She just didn't spill the beans. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what's happening. Can you pick Can you pick a famous name in the news in the last two to three months that could potentially have been a target because of their known wealth? Potentially been a target because of their known uh, wealth. Her known wealth. A Kardashian, I'm assuming? I'll give you another guess. Okay. It's not a Kardashian. Um, can you give me an age bracket or why this person would be somebody I would know? Uh, she might be over 50. I don't know how old she is. What is she? like? A woman. Avi. But <laughs> I need more because there's so many no, famous No, women. that's all you get. Last two or three months in the news, quite possibly because of her wealth and uh, being a target because of her wealth. Martha Stewart? Uh, that's a good guess. Gwyneth Paltrow. What? Oh, the ski thing in Utah. Gwyneth Paltrow. So... She had this ski accident. In my bad. The trial was in March. Yeah. So I guess it happened before that. So. Yeah. But she was in the news a couple months ago. But it, they said that it was her head to toe old money look that is still echoing through society today. Also, I don't now know this, what that means. The old money look that she has or had or has could potentially be part of the problem why, she, you know, this accident was like. You look like you got money. What? Because she were her skis Rolls Royce or something? Like I don't Bentley. It, like it doesn't matter. Like if she, if she looked like she had money, and then it's just like, well, we're gonna sue you. Oh, you mean like those people who pull out in front of you in their five hundred dollar Accord and your Bugatti and then brake check you? <laughs> those kind of people. There's so many people out there, and then there's the the legal side of it that will chase you mm -hmm. to sue them it's like mm -hmm. hey you know that we can sue them right mm -hmm. and they're like oh i didn't know and then it's like yeah we'll be your attorney we're going to take 75 percent, but you'll still get oh you know if we can get 10 Free million if you get 10, 10 million you're going to get 2.5 million yeah so there's this video out it's been around forever in a day but it's like in these compilations that the kid watches on youtube and it's this old man who walks he's at a restaurant and he goes over to the the drink machine and he pushes the thing and he lets the ice hit the floor then he walks over by where the ice is and then lays down and he's like, ah, because he wanted to sue them for there being ice on the floor and him slipping on it and hurting himself. One, he wasn't hurt. Two, he didn't think about cameras. Three, he went to jail. That is all. Man, oh man, I was watching some news broadcast yesterday and, oh, it was the bear. It was the bear. And it's because of these stupid things and these stupid people mm -hmm. and these manipulative and want something for nothing people um, that these things exist so, and, the, and the news guy says well now you got to put on the sign at the beach watch for bears well because here's the thing somebody a bear comes up out of the water and some dumbass walks up to it and tries to pet it and gets her hand eaten off they're going to sue the city of Destin or the county of Okaloosa they're going to sue bears because I was about to say how you going to sue uh, what's his name Smokey and then Sm uh, <laughs> Uh, I think maybe the biggest danger on the beach yep. is high wind because you, those umbrellas oh, fly around like yeah. impaling That people. umbrella that flew out at uh, 38, you missed that while we were down there. It like came out the ground, but they caught it in time. So um, I don't know anything about what I'm about to say, but this article here says that this is also buoyed by the elite world depicted in HBO's Succession. Oh, I've, I've never seen that. Succession? I've never heard of it. Succession? Succession. Succession. Yeah. Succession. I don't know. No, Succession. And Kim Kardashian's monochrome mega mansion. I knew she was going to be in there sooner or later. The quiet luxury trend has quickly caught on, even though these days most Americans are more likely to live paycheck to paycheck. Just because she painted her mansion in muted, you know, neutral White. tones doesn't make it <laughs> quiet, quiet luxury. luxury. It just means that she likes all her stuff to match. Yeah, you're on top of a hill in Calabasas, like... <laughs> Who needs neon pink and orange and green? So, uh, 
Why question. should that be the HOA colors? And she's like, I really wanted to paint this entire thing pink. But they were like, no, ma'am. No. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> so what is quiet luxury? Well, it's marked by expensive materials and muted tones. Quiet luxury, also known as stealth wealth, is the complete lack of logos and anything too conspicuous. So, as I said, maybe these expensive brands will see a decline. No, I think no. the expensive brands will then make their products less, less flashy and still charge. <laughs> well, say, can you imagine like, Gucci like the new, going all white with like a little Gucci label? Because that's well, not them. You know, I don't get Prada because Prada is just a black leather bag with a little. I don't thing get on any it. of it personally. So that's it's like me. now. The new red bottoms aren't going to have red bottoms on them. They're not going to have red bottoms. Lou Bouton? Christian Lou Bouton, I guess. They're going to take the red off because it's too flashy, and you'll pay more to have them to tell people. Yeah, these these are the new ones. So when they look at them, they go, is that Payless circa 2008, or what is that? You're like, no, I paid three grand for these. but They came from the same factory. Quite. Came from the same factory with the same, you know, sweatshop oh, migrant kid workers. But that's fun gonna... watching the sunglasses where they're like, you order your Ray Bans and you order your Walmart, and they come from the same factory. They just put them in two different boxes and ship them out. But same, it says same sunglasses. It says that he must be in a hurry. He always is in the mornings. Yeah. He said hi when he walked by. Uh, it says that in her daily courtroom appearances, Paltrow wore high-end brands such as Celine and the Row. Along with a one thousand four hundred and fifty dollar black Prada boots, and carried a three hundred and twenty five dollar notebook by Smithson in the company's signature blue. How? But okay, here's the thing: they're gonna rip her apart for dressing and and doing the things she does on a daily basis. However, if she had come in there in a pair of Levi's and a T-shirt from Walmart, they would have tore apart sneakers, for that too. They would have tore apart for trying to look like the everyday person. I don't. I don't even know the verdict of this case. She wasn't guilty. Oh, so let me ask you this: They found her not guilty. Let me rephrase. Look, all I can say is there's everybody's going to spend money on what they want to spend money on, mm-hmm. and some things are better than others and wasteful. Than three hundred and twenty-five dollars for a notebook. If it's a leather notebook and you can refill it every single day that you want to with a new thing of paper. It's a, it's a about three, $325 for a notebook? Yeah, I wouldn't do it either. But. It looked like a little me five-star <laughs> trapper keeper. <laughs> but it has like a CC somewhere on there. Just because it's signature blue. Like, I could go to Kinko's right now and make that joker. 325 mm-hmm. Get me a little side hustle going. But of Look, course, I spent my money on Hey Dudes and Salt Life. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, all my money goes to bourbon. This is true. Bourbon and draft IPAs, which. Oh, I guess then mine is mimosa. <laughs> Justin be hating on me for my IPA choice selection. Tastes like pine cones. I still want to know when he ate a pine cone. <laughs> I'm guessing know, in the to army know the he had to at some point. But of course, well, I guess we can include that in our new new category of videos because we got these new categories of videos, and. The new category of videos was we were going to try to find the worst food in Destin to eat. Mm-hmm. And for Squirrel Tribe Life, though, right? And then, yeah, Squirrel Tribe Life. And then also try to find the strangest food combinations that taste good. That's what the kid wants to do. But, of course, understated luxury is not new. On the heels of the financial crisis, people who had money wanted to be a little bit more subdued. Now the stealth well style has been reborn once again as Americans' economic circumstances get increasingly divided after the so-called K-shaped recovery left the wealthiest Americans even better off than before. We've discussed the K-shaped recovery mm-hmm. before. Yeah. Now you know what the K-shaped recovery now I know. means. This time, however, there's an even more understated undertone notwithstanding the heftier price tag. And one of the central characters on Secession even scoffs at a tartan Burberry tote bag that retails for $2,890, calling the luxury bag ludicrously capacious. I mean, that right there lets you know that you got too much money when that's how you talk. That that right there says that they weren't sponsored by Burberry. That's what that says. (laughs) So... How to get the stealth wealth look for less. Now we're getting closer to what you were talking about. Can the typical American afford a $600 Loro 
Piana cashmere baseball hat, like the one worn on Secession. Does a typical American know what the hell a whoever, whoever, whoever baseball cap is? I don't know what that is, okay. and apparently you told me the other day that a lot of people are allergic to cashmere. Oh, yeah. Fortunately, the quiet luxury trend is less about buying the exact item, but rather re replicating the look with clothes that fit well in neutral tones or monochrome. There are so many women on YouTube who do that. Um, there's this one, I don't remember her name. She's a gorgeous black woman, and I can't remember her name at all, but she does that. She goes to Walmart and buys all these things, and it's a recreation of this outfit, and she'll go and she'll be like, I spent literally $75 head to toe. This would have cost me 10, 10 grand. And it's like, boo, you look better in this than that person does in that thing anyway, so. That's like that movie, Legally Blonde. Yes. And she knew all the clothing oh, yes. and everything mm -hmm. and how people, it was made. And people, the, are, people used to rag on that movie about it being a dumb blonde movie, but it's about being a brilliant woman who happens to be blonde, and it's about woman power and women sticking together and uplifting each other. It's a very good movie. Our kid if, actually loves it. If the black woman did it with Walmart, could you call it legally black? I mean... Her hair's black. Legally not blonde. Always. Legally black. Sometimes it's red. Oh, it is? She changes her hair color. Uh, I don't know who you're talking about, so I just assumed it was black. Oh. We got to pull that up. Okay. I want to see who you're talking about. I got to remember her name. Starts with an L. That's all I got. So it says that Carolyn McCallahan. McCallahan. She sounds like old money. A certified financial planner and founder of Life Planning Partners in Jacksonville, Florida, suggests purchasing a few signature staples such as a coat or handbag on sale or from a local consignment store and pairing them with less expensive jeans and t-shirts from Target or Walmart, just as Roman Roy did in the final season of Succession. I don't know if this is about the TV making show smart or money moves or about this TV <laughs> show Succession. TV show. Now, now it's like, I didn't say it three times. Now I'm like, all right, now I got to look up this show and see uh -huh. what it's about. Mm -hmm. Clever, like clever marketing. In Philadelphia. Clever marketing. Yeah. I like that. I kind of like that show. They used to talk about it all the time and I'd never seen it. Um, but it said that this... You know, again, you're going to buy these um, expensive coats and handbags, maybe at a discount, and pair them with less expensive jeans and T-shirts from Target or Walmart. Is this good news for Walmart? Is it good news for the Walmart CEO? Is it good news for stockholders? Because Walmart made a or made an announcement that they were trying to go towards a slightly <laughs> more upscale. That's what I was going to tell you. So Brand they, they started. They has still Sophia Varga in there. Or Sophia something? Var, Var, Vargara. They were she's the one from um, Modern Family. Modern Family, yeah. Um, and she's married to the guy from Magic Mike. That's all. I, he's been in a lot of stuff. Joe Mantaglia. I think it was a part of the fact that the wealthier income earner, higher income earners, were now shopping in Walmart. So here's the thing. So Walmart, had, I talked about this months ago, Walmart said that they wanted their clothing area to look more like something you'd see like in a mall. They wanted it to look more high-end. So they're bringing in mannequins and they're setting it up into like little pockets of stuff. They wanted to higher end it. They've got Reebok in there and they've got some other people in there. Like they're trying to ch move away from just the Walmart brand, that great value clothes. I don't know what their brand was, but um, they're trying to move away and great go value clothes. Levi's. They got Carhartt. They have no, what was the name now? of their clothing? It was no boundaries. There's no go. boundaries. There we go. So they're trying. They still have that for the affordable, whatever. But then they want to add in all this other stuff. But the problem was that during the pandemic, um, remember I would talk about on old videos. I would talk about you know how to save money and whatever else. And I would have people in the comments going, you know, I make two hundred thousand dollars a year, and the reason why I I have as much wealth as I do is because I go and shop at the Dollar Tree and I shop here, here, and here. And then you have other people going, why are you with the money to afford more things buying up all the things that people with less money can afford? So all this is going to do is do the same thing. The people who can afford the higher brands, they're going to go in there and wipe out the stuff at Walmart and uh, other places. You know, Target's not cheap, though, for you clothes. You can't please everybody, right? No. Just like you said, if Gwyneth Paltrow showed up in the courtroom looking, you know, like she ain't had no money, mm -hmm. then she would get her name drug for that. Mm -hmm. It's always it's always going to be something. There's always going to be somebody yep, who has got a, a problem. problem with something. But it says that this type of quiet luxury without the name brands and logos is overdue, so they say. As the economy slows and persistent inflation makes many Americans feel stretched too thin, it's time to shift away from a keeping up with the Joneses mentality. 
find quality things that last a lot longer, that's better than throwaway pieces. So now think about this. That's fast fashion. But think about this. What they're saying is spend less money on things that you don't have to replace as often. So what they're saying is less money into the economy overall. Here's here's what's crazy is you can't see it on my screen, but it says that inflation rose breaking along the top breaking inflation rose at four percent annual rate in May, the lowest in two years. Bullshit. As it says that the economy slows and persistent inflation makes many Americans feel stretched too thin. So it's like persistent inflation. And in the same screen, inflation rose at four percent, the lowest in two years. And this is For a that one month this is saying. a continuing trend because I, as I go through the next slide, it's on every site. Like mm -hmm. the they, the Fed is literally paying to advertise and market how low inflation is, which is what exactly what we discussed in Georgia at Chick Fil A that morning. Yep. As I told you, eventually we will get there because it's been so high. Mm -hmm. So now it's only 4% over the 20% that it was last year. Well, the only reason why they can say that is because they're not taking into consideration food and everyday necessities. Because if they were, they would say, oh, well, orange juice went from $5 to $10. Your body wash went from $6 to $8 in less than two weeks. That's more than 4%, no matter how you want to look I at it. I just that. want y'all to know that it is, um, it's, it is a, it's, it's a, it's clever marketing mm -hmm. and advertising. It's a uh, lip Deemed service. To make you feel good. They're putting lipstick on the pig. Yeah. And the simple fact of the matter is, is it only comes down to money. Because as you see this headline across the top of the screen, it says breaking. Inflation rose at 4% annually. How do you feel? How does your bank account look? How's your wallet? No change. No change. No change. No, no, no meaningful impact to you unless you realize that I need to make more money. And I got to figure out how to spend less. But more importantly, I got to make more money. So because eventually is, you get to a point where you can't spend any less. What's funny is they're like, this is great. Because they put they put that in your head. Your brain goes, oh, okay, this is spend good. Spend more. Yeah. Yeah. Spend more. Oh, it's on sale. Well, I mean, it's less expensive than it was before, which was higher than it was before. So it's really on sale. And if really you don't really need it, does it matter if it's on sale? So, oh, this is totally still on topic. Uh, the kid and I were watching something, and it was about this lady who does this couponing, right? And she shows the pantry where she has hundreds, hundreds of these different things. And she says, you know, I'll never run out. They'll probably all expire before I can use them. And if friends or anybody I know needs some, I'll sell it to them. And she's like, I got most of this stuff for absolutely free. And I'm like, <laughs> you're the reason why people are like, there are shortages. No, it's because people like that who have this couponing addiction, who want to hold on to 10 things, knowing good and damn well they don't use that at all, but they'd like to be able to say, look what I've done. They're keeping it from everybody else. Well, that's a whole new hoarding, and they, they label it couponing so it doesn't sound as bad. I don't want to judge. I don't want to judge, but I'm judging it. You know, last night you threw on TV, you turned off the Hunger Games, one of the Hunger Game movies, and you put it on uh, Property Brothers. Now the Property Brothers are working with celebrities to mm -hmm. help. Jay Leno was last night, right? Yes. And Jay Leno is hoarding cars and motorcycles in his garage. Mm -hmm. Is it no different? It's completely different. How is it any different? Who? Uh, how, how is it any different? Because he has a collection of cars that he cannot drive. That There's are no way. ridiculously expensive cars. I'm but, talking about toothpaste and food. But he's still hoarding things it. That are there are other people out there who can afford <clears throat> what he has, but he's hoarding it. He's got over 160 motorcycles. He's got all these one-off customs, all originals. He's hoarding them. I don't feel it's the same, and that's where you and I will differ on this one. I don't feel it's the same because that's not a necessity. That's not something that people need or will help them sustain their life. Whereas toothpaste the boxes a, of food, toothpaste and is not a necessity. The the band aids and the medicine, the Tylenol, the all these toothpaste is actually things. bad for you. Yeah, the fluoride if ones. You yeah, you swallow it. Now, let's talk about money. It's still funny. If you swallow toothpaste, they say contact poison control. Yet there's fluoride in your drinking water, municipal drinking water, and they tell you it's fine. Anyway. Continue. Nine out of ten dentists recommend don't swallow toothpaste because it'll yeah. kill you. I don't know if it'll kill you, but don't do it. It might, mainly is a warning for kids. As the warning was for kids. Well, they put the fluoride in the water for the kids. That's what it started out for. So, you know. So we're gonna we're sticking here with Market Insider, uh, Business Insider, and we're gonna go back to the RV sales because we went to camping world the other day yeah we put that video up on squirrel tribe life go check it out that was a fun and exciting experience that we didn't really expect to happen the, the way, way it did. happened that yeah. was kind of strange 
But it says that RV sales are an under the radar bellwether for the health of the broader economy and they are tanking in 2023. There was a lot of RVs. You couldn't get there them. There was a for lot a of RVs on the lot. A lot of uh, toy haulers, mm -hmm. campers, pull behind, uh, bumper pull, fifth wheel gooseneck, class A's, diesel pushers is what she called mm -hmm. them. Um, there's still a shortage of class B's. There's, there was two class B's, maybe three. Yeah. But a lot of these were actually used. A lot of them were used, just purchased. Uh, used consignment is it becoming uh, t are we getting to the point now where this inexpensive this once inexpensive vacation option is no more uh, granted the class A's you know at 100, 200, 300, 400 really not necessarily but you know a lot of folks they were, they'll were retire mm -hmm. and they'll buy a class A and that's going to be their thing so you got to think about it. A lot of those during the pandemic when everything was closed and you couldn't do anything, but you still wanted to get out, the, the RVs were the way to do it, which is also why we had one to travel over the summer so we could still go places and not have to whatever. And a lot of people went in looking for them. And these manufacturers were like, ah, oh, we can't get everything right now, the shortages, the supply chain issues, the whatevers. And so they ramped up production in hopes of fulfilling these customers' needs. And then everything opened back up and these customers don't have that same need. Now on top of that though, the places where you can go and park your RV or whatever, the vacation style ones, there's one in Okaloosa right on the water. It's a, it's an entire like massive area for campers of any kind, right? And it's right on the water. I want to go there one day and try it out to see what it's like. But a lot of places now, if you're not a KOA or you're not a harvest host, there's a lot of places that are being bought out. I don't know if I sent you the article on this. I probably did not. There's nope. a lot of places that are being bought out by developers who want that land because they can build and go up, whereas all this so can do right now. So it's not just the mobile home communities mm -hmm. that are going to get wiped out. It's going to be the RV uh, parks. Parks, yeah. Add on top of that the insanely high interest rates that will make financing an RV like really expensive. Mm -hmm. But it says that there's an under the radar indicator of economic health that's flashing red in 2023. Sales of RVs are on the decline this year, pointing to a weaker consumer and a softer economy. Uh, and weaker it says, consumer. I don't like how that's phrased, but okay. Well, this was the this was the intent of the Fed. Yeah. Last year, Jackson Hole, pain will be felt by families and businesses. We're going to shrink the economy. We're going to cut jobs. Uh, RVs are a classic rate sensitive discretionary purchase. And with higher interest rates, not going to happen. It says that there's a lot of indicators that experts like to scrutinize to get a sense of how the economy is doing. Housing is a big one, as well as prices for commodities like copper for its view into manufacturing activity. Even cardboard boxes tell a pretty clear story. But some indicators are a little less obvious. For instance, data on the sale of recreational vehicles can tell us a lot about the health of the broader economy. Now think about this. We live in an apartment complex. We have a class B that literally fits into one of the spaces. It's like a regular van, but because it's labeled a um, recreational vehicle, we're not allowed to keep it here. We have to now pay $300 a month to keep it at a U-Haul storage facility. Think of how many neighborhoods out there with HOAs who won't allow you to have your camper there, your class A, your class C, your class B. Where do you put it? You're jumping ahead of my slides. Oh, sorry. So, But that's what I'm going to say. There's so many apartments going up in townhomes and stuff like that that won't allow these things. There's HOAs that won't allow them. So even if you wanted to buy one, where are you going to put it? That is a challenge. That is a challenge uh, and quite possibly a business opportunity for anyone who has the available space and land. Um but then you got to factor in the cost of running that business and the insurance. liability and the insurance and everything else that comes with it. Um, but again, this day and age, I'm not looking to operate a business with high liability and risk or physical products or any of that. I prefer to be digital. Mm -hmm. I prefer to be digital and virtual. Yep. If you guys want to know more, by all means, hit me up on Patreon. But it says that an article from the Financial Times notes that RV sales are a classic disposable income and interest rate sensitive item. Obviously, with less disposable income and higher interest rates, then those sales are going to plummet. Mm -hmm. And in other words, when the money is cheap and things are looking good for consumers, people borrow to buy an RV and hit the road. And inversely, the opposite when things are not so good. A professor of economics at Indiana's Ball State University 
Ball State. Well, that's like the Carolina Gamecocks. You, where you walk around with Gamecocks written on the back of your pants. I couldn't do it. Michael Hicks tells the Financial Times that RV sales are actually better than economists at predicting a downturn. And economists are not really good at what they do. They're like weathermen, meteorologists, forecast yeah. weather, weather, weather person, weather people, weather persons. That's what it is. Persons, weather mm -hmm. persons. Mm -hmm. Cause you gotta get it. You gotta get it right. You can't say weather people. They're weather persons. What do you mean weather people? <laughs> <laughs> but it says that that might be bad news as sales of recreational vehicles are down more than 50% this year. And this is according to data from the RV Industry Association. And like many sectors and industries, the RV market was heavily distorted by the pandemic. And this year's sales sagging could just be a normalization after a C-19 fuel buying spree. So that's kind of like, all right, things are on sale now. Well, they're not really on sale because they're way more expensive. They're, they were way more expensive than they used to be. They just marked that down. Mm -hmm. So it's still way more expensive than it would have been two years ago. But on the flip side, like Home Depot, Home Depot was complaining about, you know, warning folks and complaining about how they were going to see a decline this year and maybe next year. Only, though, after seeing a huge increase the last two years. Mm -hmm. So is it really a decline or is it just, I mean, you're still way above where you would have been. I don't know. But parking and storage is a huge factor, I think, outside of the discretionary spending, the high interest rates. You got to figure out, you know, or factor in the fact that you got to put it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And this just adds to the cost of this inexpensive vacation option. And we're sticking to the theme here, vacation and discretionary spending and economic challenges. And we're going to talk about fees and prices that we discovered yesterday when we went to East Pass. So I was going to say really quickly, there are a lot of, even here in Destin area, there's a lot of like Avid and self-storage and all those places popping up where you can go put all your stuff. And my brain goes, it's surprising to me there's so many of those popping up. It just means that more people have way more stuff than they need if they need an extra place to put it and it's like why not get rid of it if once you put it in storage it obviously shows that most of the time that it's things that you don't need not always i fully understand that sometimes it is like legit storage because but does whatever. it just end up going from your stores to somebody else's storage generally i mean i don't know yeah i don't know but yesterday we were trying to park we actually solved this question we figured out the answer to this question that has been floating around here about free parking in destin it's not really free. It, oh, it's definitely not free. It is. I mean, the pass is free for the residents. But no, it, it was it is? okay because they're charging two hundred and five dollars for non-residents. If you don't, yeah, if you don't live here, okay. if you're not a resident. So, we were trying to park, and public parking was fifteen. And we're talking about a car. We're not talking about an RV. Yeah. RV ain't gonna happen. Okay, fifteen dollars for the day. So this is what is going into consideration for travel and vacation and tourism and this economy that relies heavily on it. it relies on you know the armed forces and military it relies on conventions and it relies on just general summer vacation mm -hmm. the conventions are kind of like year round but it was $15 a park it was $20 a park at Harbor Walk but we found another one that was 10 to park but it was actually 11 because we didn't have the apps they charge you a dollar for not having the app all of this is documented on Squirrel Tribe Life, so go check out that video after you watch this one. But I want to get into the real, the, the real problem, which is we. I wasn't gonna say real problem, but um, when I book hotels for us wherever we're going, oh yeah, I the, look because I'll check hotels.com, I'll check Hilton, I'll check Marriott Bonvoy, whatever. I'll check individual places. There's a lot of places like in Orlando when we'd go to Disney or go hang out, go to Universal, whatever. I would pick the hotel that says parking included because if it didn't say parking it's like 35, included, 40 dollars a day anywhere from 35 to 40 dollars a day and i'm like why would i want to do that why would it if you have a parking lot and your guest is staying here and i know that people are going to be like well it's already included in the price of your room then and that may be the case but i'm going to tell you the the phrasing of it makes a huge uh, difference to me the, how you go about this is important because yesterday we we visited east pass for the first time uh and and the last we were we were we were shocked. We were shocked by what we were told as, as soon as we were sat. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna read to you here what their menu says, for which their our server told us, in her own words, and then 
referred us to the menu for further explanation and information. And it says that we have recently changed our service term. I'm sorry. We have recently changed our service team members to a commission based pay model. We now charge a 20 percent service charge to all restaurant sales. Our new commission based compensation model for our team is designed to ensure that they continue to be very well compensated for their hard work, cost of living increases and inflation we currently face. The new commission and sales incentives they receive with the new program exceeds the net revenue in our prior income model. In short, the intent of these changes is designed to increase their wage earning potential and create a better living experience for them. With this commission model in place, there's no expectation of a gratuity in addition to the 20% service charge. If you feel an additional gratuity is warranted, please know that your generosity is recognized and exceptional service is very much appreciated and 100% will be retained by your server. I have a huge issue with that entire thing because you have people who are getting paid the, the measly $2.13 an hour or even $6 an hour plus whatever tips and still is hard to live, especially in a location like this. And they just took away your base pay and say you're only going to get paid off tips. What happens uh, when the tourist season is over and only locals go eat? And no, you're no, no. Literally when the tourist season is over that and the locals refuse to go eat there mm -hmm. because they're not going to pay $20 to park mm -hmm. and then be forced to pay a 20% service fee on top of mediocre, if not poor and terrible service. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you're going to go off on this 120 percent on Patreon. Oh, so yes. we're going to we're going to reserve that for Patreon and let you really rip that one <laughs> and let loose because we know that this content will be seen locally in Destin, and I, I don't think that they want that information out there publicly like that. Now, um, we were going to put together like the cheapest places to park and the cheapest places to eat, so we may do that on another channel just to help travel travelers navigate and save money mm -hmm. um but i looked up frla florida restaurants and lodging association.org and it says that the minimum wage effective september 30 of t last year the minimum wage in florida increased to 11 dollars an hour and the required cash wage for tipped employees increased to seven dollars and 98 cents mm -hmm. and the woman told me that she doesn't make any she has no hourly wage she mm -hmm. says she makes no money per hour that's what she said yep now, either she's lying to me or she has been lied to. OK, mm -hmm. um, I asked her, I said, well, does that make you an independent contractor? And she was confused. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how do you work as an employee but don't receive a wage? Because then now we're violating labor laws. But then it hit me this morning. Either she was lying or she was lied to. And I think this is how it works. Mm -hmm. She's going to get her minimum wage. Mm -hmm after she gets her tips so she doesn't necessarily earn an hourly wage but if she worked enough to make uh, if she worked enough to make $60 that day uh -huh. in hourly wage based on minimum wage and she earned $100 in tips through the 20% mandatory fee she would then be paid $60 for hourly wage and they would calculate that and then they would pay her $40 in tips but she doesn't get it up front she only gets it after the fact. So she she doesn't really know how much she's going to truly make on tips until it's over because they're going to pull that money f from the, the 20 percent to pay her hourly wage. But if she doesn't make enough, then I don't know. Does she fall into a deficit? Does she fall into a hole where she then owes the restaurant no, to, that's to cover? That's ridiculous. To cover her hourly wage because she can't be an employee without earning an hourly wage. You're, you're calling her an employee. They may 1099 her. They may not be giving her a W-2 because you don't get insurance through a restaurant. There's no full time, generally speaking. Um, it's just. Well, I think the beauty of it is, is we could potentially find this out. Yeah. And uh, no, I can find it. I walk up and be like, hey, I'm looking for a job. Explain your pay to me. Ooh, that'd be a good one. That'd be a good one. Little Aaron Brockovich internal investigation undercover investigation probably shouldn't wear the scroll trap t-shirt we'll I do, do like undercover boss we go through all this like makeup stuff and changes <laughs> and when it's done you just have like a hat on or like, a purple wig yeah. it's like you look just like yourself it's like, no i don't have a hat on i have a hat on <laughs> clark can i just put on some glasses and be like wait aren't you nope 
I have glasses, can't you see? Uh, so now we're on Yahoo Finance and on the top banner of Yahoo Finance, breaking inflation rises at slowest pace in more than two years. They are very proud of this clickbait. Mm -hmm. They're very proud of this clickbait because it's like, if you raise prices higher than giraffe booty for the last two mm -hmm. and a half years, and then now all of a sudden you kind of like tapered off on how high you raise them. Of course, they didn't raise as much, but they're still high. Record revenues, uh, I'm sorry, record, record revenues, but plummeting profits. The Fortune 500 is trying to tell us something about the state of the economy. Every year, the Fortune 500 offers a snapshot of what the biggest and mightiest in American capitalism are up to. The list captures how the nation's largest cities battle to draw in big business, reveals the ever-changing industries that are driving GDP growth, and unearths trends that are reinventing the economy from corporate consolidation to tech's increasing dominance. But the 69th annual list also uncovered a funny thing on corporate balance sheets. Revenues hit a record high, but profits fell by a lot. Amid an economic climate full of doom mongering about a coming recession, a commercial real estate apocalypse and a debate about greedflation being the reason for soaring prices. The Fortune 500 snapshot from 2022 is trying to tell us something, but it, is it a sign of an imminent recession or is this just a return to normal i have a question their profits are they showing their profits after they've paid out their shareholders and themselves because <laughs> then of course it's going to show low after you've oh, paid everybody see that's a good question because if you're doing your business taxes that's a good at question the end of everything you want to have as many write-offs as possible you want to have as much free stuff as possible whatever so that at the end it looks like you made less in profit you know, for your business and these businesses they kick this can down they kick the profit can down the road right because they don't want to have to pay taxes so they, so but on a year like 2022 2023 mm -hmm. they're like this is the year we're going to take it and that's the year that they pay it out and the uh high level executives c-suite executives shareholders board members everybody they get theirs they pay their taxes or they'll then filter it through their different channels of diversity uh cash flow and security and then the company will look like it didn't make a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, it'll, it'll make the company look like it didn't make a lot of profit it'll make mm -hmm. it look like they didn't make huge net income on their balance sheet despite record revenue mm -hmm. So again, I tell people all the time when when I go through articles and whatever else, I'm like, you have to hear what they're not telling you because they're never going to tell you the honest to goodness truth because then it's they're going gonna to tell you what off. they're going to tell you, you what benefits hear. them and what, what you want to hear. You want to hear that they didn't make profits. You don't want to hear that they're you know. Uh, some people want to hear higher revenue than normal because that means people are no, spending money, whatever else. But it also means that the prices have been jacked up. No right? one would want to hear that there has been record revenue and within the Fortune 500 record companies, profits. record profits, record job loss, record mm -hmm. layoff, record recession. Like, mm -hmm. they don't want to hear that. No. They so don't want to hear that. it in a way that you don't hear that, even though that's, that's really exactly what's what happening. happening. Not to mention, we've already mentioned earlier that this K-shaped recovery is in fact happening. So it's like the money's there. The money is there. Now, this is important, folks. Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon warns of pain ahead for commercial real estate. Okay? Mm -hmm. now, this is going to have a huge implication and impact to our overall economy and jobs. Okay? Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon told CNBC, Sarah Eason, the New York-based firm, will post impairments on loans and equity investments tied to commercial real estate in the second quarter. There's no question that the real estate market, and in particular, commercial real estate, has come under pressure. And we talked about this yesterday, mm -hmm. with three quarters of three quarters of a billion dollars going bank, like defaulting on this loan and bankruptcy of this Hilton or these these two hotels. Yeah. In San Francisco. It's like, where does that money come from then? You know, where does it come from? But who does it affect? Mm -hmm. 
And it's going to affect so many people. It's going to affect the banks. It's going to change bank policies. It's mm -hmm. going to change bank interest rates. It's going to change bank fees. It's definitely going to affect the people who want the loans in the future because you're going to get the higher interest rates now to help cover all this other stuff. It's going to change the tourism in the area, the economy, the income, the discretionary spending. It's going to change those people who potentially were higher level, higher income earners and their ability to go on vacation like this is going to permeate throughout the entire country, throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And on top of Goldman's lending activities, it also took direct stakes in real estate that will also face markdowns. Okay, so this is going to be the coming crash. There's going to be a, 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 com a, a commercial real estate-led crash that could potentially force this insolvency nightmare and liquidity crisis in some of the higher-end, more expensive neighborhoods. Hmm. That'll then trickle down to the middle class lower income that work for these people like this is this is it this is it you say commercial real estate crash and my brain goes well i hope you know that that shopping center is now going to be a condo development uh, apartment development because it may be a commercial real estate crash but it'd be great for developers or, to come in and scoop up for cheap and turn it into well what, residential it'll, what stuff. it'll end up being is a vacant hole in a desert attractive nuisance that the bank will then own as the uh, uh, the obligee fails to pay for it until then it gets sold off at a discount to mm -hmm. then be redeveloped, but in the middle in that process. But this is literally going to be 2008 all over again, mm -hmm. but in commercial. Yeah, I in agree. Commercial. I agree. Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon said Monday that his bank will disclose markdowns on commercial real estate holdings as the industry grapples with higher interest rates. Financial firms recognize loan defaults and falling valuations as write downs that affect quarterly results. And he says that there's no question that the real estate market and in particular commercial real estate has come under pressure. After years of low interest rates and lofty valuations for office buildings, the industry is in the thrones of a painful adjustment to higher borrowing costs and lower occupancy rates due to the shift to remote work. Some property owners have walked away from holdings rather than refinancing their loans. Defaults have just begun to show up in the bank's results. You said under pressure and my brain went, under pressure. <laughs> You know what? It's funny because I immediately just start singing in my head. That's, you, that's why I'm a freaking squirrel. <laughs> you would not fingers. be welcome in their board meetings. It's like, <sighs> you're like, man, we're having a serious conversation. And you're jamming out in your brain over there. I'm like, you got to watch the things you say to me then. So <laughs> your fault. I can go back to last year where I, I made these videos and I said the the bankruptcies are coming, and people are like, no, you're crazy. I'm mm -hmm. like, they're like, I knew, despite what people thought they knew back then. I guess I just said it too early because, you know, blow, no crystal a, ball, just paying attention well, to the trends and what is happening uh, and, and whatever a broken else. clock is right twice a day. There so you go. it's like, yeah, I can sit there and say it all I want, but it's like, eventually it may happen. But yeah, I knew this was going to happen. Yeah. Like I, I knew this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Goldman posted almost $400 million in first quarter impairments on real estate loans alone. After corporate profits surged in the second half of 2020 and through 2021, sparking outrage from consumers struggling to cope with rising costs of living, things took a bearish turn last year. No mercy. No mercy. 2020-2021. They uh, pro corporate profits surged. Mm -hmm. Now, 2023, yeah, we didn't make that much money. We, we, we didn't make that much money. Mm -hmm. The Federal Reserve jacked up interest rates to slow the economy and fight inflation, leaving the corporate sector with a, sp a spate of indigestion as companies ranked, raked in record revenues, but profits tanked. Bullshit. <laughs> the trend came as rising interest rates increased borrowing costs for many Fortune 500 companies during the year, helping to chip away at margins even as inflation allowed for higher prices. The ailing tech sector also saw its profits sink sharply amid the e-commerce slowdown and return to office trend. And it's not just Fortune 500 companies that are experiencing falling profits either. Total after-tax U.S. corporate profits fell roughly 12% between their peak in the second quarter of 2022 and first quarter of this year. And essentially, this is marking the end of the boom in corporate profits. 
Now, what corporations are they looking at? Are they looking at the ones who are selling the RVs? Are they looking at the ones who All are... All of those who fall <laughs> into the Fortune 500. And uh, I can throw it up on Patreon if you guys want to know who's in the Fortune 500 club right now. It'll change from time to time. Um, but this marks the end of the boom in corporate profits. But what does that really mean? Does it really mean they're not making money? Or does it mean that they're not going to show that mm -hmm. they made a lot of money? question are fading profits a sign of an imminent recession there's been no shortage of recession forecasts over the past few years economists billionaire investors and even former federal reserve officials have all repeatedly warned that the u.s economy is on shaky ground but despite the pessimistic predictions the unemployment rate is stuck near pre-pandemic lows u.s gdp continues to rise and stocks just entered a bull market I like how they're making this so complex and confusing for that people is, to really yeah. kind of like put their finger on like yeah. what's really happening. Yeah. Still, some fear that the fading corporate profits could be a more cons concrete sign that a recession is coming soon. And there is certainly evidence that corporate profit declines have preceded recessions in the past. Near the top of economic cycles, rising costs result in falling U.S. corporate profits and profit margins, prompting companies to cut investment spending and jobs, thereby triggering a recession. Mm -hmm. This is a long, drawn-out way of saying, get ready. Yeah, basically. However, greedflation, the idea that businesses use the pandemic, broken supply chains, and the war in Ukraine as an excuse to raise prices more than their costs actually increased may be delaying the onset of the recession by allowing companies to more than compensate for higher costs and slowing volumes through unprecedented hikes in prices and thus expanded margins. Thus. It literally says that they made a killing. Yeah. That they did. You just have to know how to... It literally just said that they made yeah. a killing right there. And how they were able to disguise that and, and what they pegged it and blamed it on. Mm -hmm. Now, the rise of profits in 2020 and 2021 was purely a result of supply and demand imbalances in an economy that was flooded with fiscal and monetary stimulus while supply chains were fractured. But today is a new day. Today is a new day. If you ask some economists, there will be a recession at some point. But it's like asking a weather person if it's going to rain. Well, eventually, yes, yes. it will rain. But the real question is, yeah. should you when bring it rains, will it your... Pour? Well, yeah, That's how long will question. it rain? Yeah. Do you need to bring your rain gear is the question. And some economists believe that they think that we're heading to that spot where the probability of a recession over the next 12 months is high enough where it makes sense for businesses to start planning accordingly. 12 months is a long time. But the businesses have already been planning, okay? They have their strategy in place. And this is what brings us back to the last slide here, which is this disclaimer on the bottom of this menu. These businesses have been preparing. Mm -hmm. They're planning accordingly over the, for the next 12 months. and They have less overhead if they don't have employees to pay for. If the employee is not an employee but a contractor who only gets paid the 15% of the 20% that is added into your whatever. I feel sorry for the staff mm -hmm. because I know that they know that They're they have no screwed. clue what to, what's, what, like they know it's not good. Mm -hmm. But they also don't know what to do. Yeah. And odds are that if East Pass is doing it, others are going to follow suit. There will be potentially no upside in the, all that's gonna, in the service industry. All that's going to do is tank the vacation place because you, you stop. If you go to some place once, maybe twice, and it's bad enough that you decide not to go back there again, and that happens at the next restaurant or whatever you want to call it, and the next one, and the next one, you no longer go to that city. You go, you know what? Next year we're going to go someplace else. Nothing worked out well while we were there, and then an entire city is just go. I have zero interest in heading that direction. Oh yeah, because yeah. of everything that makes it uninjured. The only reason I would want to head that direction is to pass it, mm -hmm. to get to Crab Island, to get to. Uh, Okaloosa Island to get to other places to mm -hmm. get to Pensacola like they are they are they are about to they're really about to screw this up okay uh -huh. but the worst part is is that the employees the staff the workers they are going to be left holding this bag that the company is forcing 
for the consumers to pull back on and say, we're not interested in this. You know what's even worse? If they are being 1099, that they're not having taxes taken out at the end of the year. Oh, they have, they have money stacked away to pay taxes. That's going to hurt. Thank you guys for joining us yet again. We really do appreciate it. Make sure you come check us out on Patreon where we are uploading content that we cannot release on YouTube, as well as having these same conversations and discussions with you mm -hmm. in real time in live chat where you guys are able to sit there with us and have these talks and conversations discussion voice with your voice, input typing. and you know v visually if you want to you don't have to turn your camera on but it's up to you if you want to to have that 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 one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. like really like immersive interactive experience like we're really sitting here together talking about these things I'm working through them oh yeah i think i think the consensus is weekday morning right morning that's after. what it seemed so, like yeah. yeah so we're about to about to kick that off um and uh but we have a ton of other content over there as well as make sure you watch squirrel trap make sure you watch squirrel trap 2.0 make sure you check out the live stream we did yesterday that was mm -hmm. a lot of fun uh mimosa monday squirrel tribe life as well if you want to see the family family and travel and exploration and cuisine and over there we're still talking about money and economy you know in daily life mm -hmm. but you know more of a low-key chill laid-back fun atmosphere none of this you know newsy stuff uh but this is now a podcast too as well so this is the official squirrel tribe and kevin the podcast so we're going to keep that going um fun. but we got a lot of changes a lot of updates a lot of improvements um you want to send us out uh thanks for hanging out with us hope you have a fabulous tuesday or whatever day you're watching this my dudes and we love you guys okay bye